Welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. It's time for the next installment in our 2019 folk art calendar blanket. And this month, we're going to make our first super structure. We're going to stitch up a barn! <laughs> I've decided to make my barn bright red because that's the color of most of the barns around where I live. But I encourage you to think about the barns that you've seen in the area that you live, or maybe when you've been out for travels. Whatever says barn to you is the kind of color you want to choose to make your barn. Barns come in a lot of different colors, and they come built out of different materials. So don't be afraid to experiment with the kind of colors that you want to choose for your barn. And if you're not sure, a quick Google image search under the title barn will give you a whole bunch of ideas. You want to use the same fiber yarn for your barn as you have for the rest of your blanket. So I'm using 100% acrylic, for example. And you want to stick to the same weight category. I've been using a size 4 medium weight yarn all along. Now, last time we made our trees, we were allowed to experiment with a little bit of different weight category fun. So I used some size 4, which is a medium weight. I used some size 5, which is a chunky weight. And experimenting doesn't take you too far off the grid insofar as the trees were concerned. And it kind of helped give us a little more of an organic look. But for the barn, we want it to be a looking a little more man-made. So stick to the same weight category as your blanket. If you were using a size 4 medium weight yarn, like I was, or a DK, then you want to stick to the same size yarn for your barn. Now, having said that, not all yarns are created equal, and there is some variance inside a weight category. For example, I've used a Red Heart Comfort yarn in red for my barn. The Red Comfort is a little bit thicker than some of the other yarns in that weight category. I used Burnett Premium in gray and white for the roof and some of the embroidery, and I used a Red Heart Super Saver in gold for the little bit of hay in the hayloft. They're all inside the same weight category. There's a little tiny wee bit of weight variance between them, but not enough that they would create a sizing issue with all of the different pieces. So stick to the same weight category, but don't panic if your yarns aren't all absolutely identical. All right, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, grab our blankets. We'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up a barn together. In order to make our barns, be sure you're using the same fiber and weight yarn that you are for the rest of your blanket. I'm using 100% acrylic, medium size 4 yarn. I'm going to make my barn bright red. You can make your barn any color you like. Whatever color you choose, you want 50 grams or approximately 95 yards for your barn color. I'm going to use gray for the roof of my barn. So whatever your roof color is going to be, you want 20 grams or around 37 to 40 yards for your roof. You also need a small amount of white to do some embroidery for the little details. And optional, you can add a little bit of hay to the hayloft with a little bit of yellow or gold yarn. So just a little tiny wee bit of that as well. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and today's hook is the same hook we've been using all along. It's a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a 9 in the US, a size 5 in the UK. And if you haven't already subscribed, click the button and the bell so you never miss another episode. And once you've got everything together, we can get started. We're going to begin by building the main part of the barn. So grab your barn color and begin with a slip knot. And we're going to chain 31 to begin. 3, 1, 31. Visit our shop and purchase a pattern. You'll help support our show and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. Once you have 31 chains, give it a little stretch. Try not to twist it. We're going to be using the half double crochet stitch. We're going to skip the first chain from the hook, find the second one, and half double crochet into it. Nice and simple. You're just going to half double crochet into each stitch all the way back 
Try not to twist your foundation chain row. It helps to kind of gently pull from the bottom of the last stitch. That kind of helps keep your foundation chain row flat or work across a flat surface for the first row of the pattern. You'll have 30 stitches when you get back to the end of the row. At the end of row one, you'll have 30 stitches. Every row is going to end with a chain one and turn. So we're only using one chain as our turning chain, which means we're going to work our first half double crochet into the very first stitch. So there's the chain one turning, you always skip it. There's the first stitch, half double crochet right into the top of it, half double crochet in each stitch across, you'll still have 30. And you want to repeat this little row of half double crochet in each stitch across until you get to the end of row 10. So we've completed row one, you chain one turn at the end of every row, half double crochet in each stitch across, every row will have 30 stitches, you want to work nine more rows. So we're on row two, and I'll catch up with you at the end of row 10. At the end of 10 rows, you should have a nice little rectangular piece of fabric. You can count your rows, we're doing the half double crochet, so there's row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So there's ten rows of half double crochet. We're going to start the little top part of our barn that makes it look like you're looking at it on a slight angle, so you can sort of see the front and the side. We're going to chain one and turn, like we normally do, and we're going to half double crochet into the first ten stitches of this row. So just half double crochet into each of the first ten stitches. That's the first 10 stitches of this row worked. Those are the only stitches in this row we're going to work. We're now going to chain one and turn. We're going to half double crochet the first two stitches together. So we're going to begin a half double crochet in the first stitch, but we don't want this to be too bulky, so we're just going to pick up a loop in the next stitch rather than wrapping first. So you should have four stitches on, or four loops on your hook, I should say. Wrap, pull back through everything, and that's a thin half double crochet two stitches together for this project. Half double crochet into each of the next few stitches until you get to the last two stitches in this row, and then we're going to half double crochet them together as well. So there's six half double crochet between the first half double crochet two stitches together. We've worked six regular half double crochet. We're going to half double crochet the last two stitches together too. So you begin a half double crochet in the first stitch, but we want to make it a little thinner, so we're just going to pick up a loop in the last stitch. So there's four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull back through everything. So you should have something that looks like this. We're now down to eight stitches in this row. We're going to chain one and turn. We're on to row 13 now, and for the next few rows we're basically going to repeat what we did in row 12. So we're going to half double crochet the first two stitches of the row together, half double crochet across to the last two stitches, and half double crochet those two stitches together. So we're basically thinning down the number of stitches we have in each row. So we're going to go from eight at the beginning of this row down to six. So we half double crochet the first two stitches together, half double crochet into what's now the next four stitches, and half double crochet the last two stitches together as well. So you're decreasing on both ends of the little row. So that was row 11, row 12, row 13, row 14, 15, and 16. You're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to let you work rows 14 and 15 by yourself. Remember, you're just decreasing at both ends of the row, which means that you're half double crocheting the first two stitches of the row together, and the last two stitches of the row together. And every row is going to get much shorter as you go. The end of row 15, you'll have two stitches left. So you basically half double crocheted together twice. That gives you two stitches. We're going to chain one and turn for the very last row, and we're just going to half double crochet those two stitches together. So we're down to one stitch, and that is it. 
So you should have a little triangle now sitting up on top of the rectangle that we built. That's it for the red yarn. You can snip your yarn, fasten off, and take a moment with your yarn needle to weave both of your little tails in. You can work across the back of some of those rows of stitches and of course you can go back and forth on the inside of row one there. Next we're going to make our roof. So you're going to grab your roof color. I'm using gray. We're going to begin with a slip knot and we're going to begin by chaining 23. 2, 3, 23. Once you have 23 chains, give it a little tug, make sure it's lying flat, and we're going to create a slanted piece of fabric because we want to create the illusion that we're looking at sort of an angled part of the barn. So we want our building, our roof to slant kind of in one direction, in this direction. We're going to do that by working double, two, we're going to work increases on one side and decreases on the other side of our piece of fabric. It's not as difficult as it sounds. <laughs> So let's jump into it. We're going to skip over the first chain from the hook and we're going to work two double crochet. I should say two half double crochet. So we're still using half double crochet. Two half double crochet into the second chain from the hook. And now you're going to half double crochet in each chain all the way across until you get to the other end and the last two chains are looking at you. I'll catch up with you there. All right, we began the row with two half double crochet worked into the second chain from the hook. You've worked a half double crochet into each chain across. You're at the last two chains of your foundation chain row. We're going to half double crochet them together. So just like we did before, you're going to start a half double crochet in the first chain. You're not going to bother yarn overing because we want this to be a fairly thin half double crochet. You're just going to pick up another loop in the last chain. You'll have four loops on your hook, yarn over, back through everything. So we're decreasing or half double crocheting two stitches together on this side of the fabric only, which means when we chain one and turn for row two, we're going to half double crochet the first two stitches of the row together. So that's this one and this one. So we begin the half double crochet, just pick up a loop in the stitch next to it, so the first two stitches of the row are half double crocheted together. Now you're going to half double crochet all the way across to the last stitch. So we began row two with a half double crochet two stitches together. We've half double crocheted all the way across. We're to the last stitch and the last stitch is going to be sort of pointing down a little bit so make sure you don't skip it. And we're going to work two half double crochets into that last stitch. So we're increasing on this side. I should say that you will always have 22 stitches in each row. So you're always decreasing on one side, increasing on the other, but that evens itself out and each row will have 22 stitches in it. So you can already see the sort of the slant going. We're going to chain one and turn to begin row three. And row three is just like row one. So this is the increase side, which means we work two half double crochets into the first stitch. And then we half double crochet all the way across to the decreasing side. And when we get to those last two stitches, we're going to half double crochet them together. We've worked across from the increase side to the decrease side. We've got two stitches left. We're going to half double crochet them together. So you're going to work three or four, I should say, four more rows. This is the end of row three. You're going to work four more rows, always decreasing on the decrease side and increasing on the increase side. So every row ends with a chain one turn. On the decrease side, which you can tell is slanting in sort of this direction. So if you just decreased when you finish the row, this means you need to decrease when you start the next row. Similarly, if you finish a row by increasing, which we will over here, and an increase is two half double crochet worked into the same stitch. So if you end a row with an increase, you start the next row with an increase. So you're always decreasing on the same side, no matter what row you're ending or beginning, and you're always increasing on the other side. So that way you're going to get a nice little slant going. 
going to let you work four more rows. Remember to always decrease on the decrease side and increase on the increase side. And I'll see you at the end of row seven. At the end of row seven, you should have a piece of fabric that looks like this. You'll still have 22 stitches in your last row, but your rows should lean to one side. Give yourself a nice long tail for sewing. Fasten off and you can weave in the short tail, but leave the long tail out. We need one more little roof piece. So we're going to continue with our roof color. We're going to begin with a slip knot and we're going to chain 11. We're going to use the single crochet stitch now. We're going to skip the first chain from the hook, find the second one, single crochet into it, and we're going to single crochet into each chain all the way across. Once you've single crocheted all the way back to the beginning, you should have 10 stitches. Leave yourself a nice long tail for sewing. So you're only sewing around the extreme, uh, sort of the, the perimeter of this little piece, so you don't need too, too much sewing yarn. You should have 10 stitches. It's a little piece that looks like this. You can grab your yarn needle and just weave your short tail in back across those last few stitches there. So far, we have our barn main piece. We have the, mo the main piece of the roof, so that's most of the roof. And then we have this little tiny extra piece of roof that's going to lay across the other side of the triangle. And this is all going to get sewn down on top of each other when we sew it down on top of our blanket. But before we do that, we want to add some embroidery. So this is where we're going to grab our white yarn and we're going to embroider a big barn door on the side of our barn, a little barn door over here at the front of our barn, and even a little hayloft window up here in the attic. You want to cut yourself a nice length of white yarn. It's better to have a little too much than not enough because knotting your yarns together when you're embroidering can be a little annoying. But here's the good part. It doesn't, this is going to be the front. So the barn is sort of facing inside the blanket. It's going to sit on the far um, left of the blanket. So the main part of the barn or the front door is going to be facing inside the blanket. If you're making this in reverse because you're left-handed, obviously, <laughs> This will be the front of your barn and it will be sitting on the right side of your blanket. This is the front, this is the back, whatever shows on the back, so any kind of embroidery mess that you have on the back isn't going to show, so don't feel you've got to be super neat and tidy because the back isn't going to show. This is why I love kind of doing embroidery onto appliques that end up on top of something else. The first thing we're going to do is make the nice big barn. So I want you to envision a line that goes straight down here. So see the corner of the triangle, it goes straight down. This is the front of our barn. So you want to find the middle of the, the space that's left and we're gonna embroider a big old barn door on the side of it. So if I put my fingers down like this, you can grab some uh, stitch markers if you want to, or you can just count your stitches. It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So it looks like about 11 stitches wide is how wide I'm going to make my barn so, door, I should say, so that it fits into the side of my barn. All I'm going to do is bring my needle from the back to the front, just right underneath that little bottom lip of the foundation chain. I'm going to bring it from back to front and I'm going to leave a tail of the yarn back behind it so I can knot everything up when I'm done. And then I'm going to work in nice straight lines. I want to embroider short straight lines up about three quarters of the way, trying to keep them as straight as possible. So you're going to look for the next spot that is as direct on top of where you've brought your yarn out as possible and then you're going to find the one above that so chances are you're going to have to skip up on the back side because you can't come you want to use the same spaces that your yarn is going in and out of but of course you can't go down and then back up through the same space because your yarn will just undo so that's the back so far I've got my little tail hanging there it is down here and I've created two straight lines. I'm going to go up a little higher. So I'm going to jump up to the next space that I feel is directly above the line I'm making. There's no fine science to this, guys. We just want to make a nice 
straight line of white. And I'm going to go up once more. It's going to be a nice big door. And there's the first side of my door. I'm going to go across the top now doing the same thing. So now I'm going to make a line that goes across the top of what's going to be my big barn door. And I'm going to make the stitches every two, like my white embroidery is going to cover every two stitches of double, or I should say half double crochet. You don't want to be pulling too tight while you're embroidering because you don't want to yank the fabric that you're embroidering through. So you don't want to pull it or make it taunt or make big spaces in between your stitches. So you just want your stitches to be mm, firmly against the fabric, but not tight so that you're creating holes in between your spaces. All right. I think I like that. That is two, four, six. That's only eight stitches wide, but I think I like the width of that. Of course, you can make your barn door wider or not as wide as mine, but once you've finished making your line across the top, it's time to start coming straight down. And you're just going to do the same thing. You're going to try and create a straight a line up and down from the top of your barn door down to the bottom of the barn edge as you can. And now I'm going to fill in a nice white line all the way across the bottom too because I want there to be one white square. Here's what I have so far. This is the outline of the big white door on the side of my barn. And now I want to create diagonal lines running from one corner to the other to create a nice white X. And if you're curious, this is what it looks like so far on the back. So it's not super messy, but it's definitely not as tidy as the front. If you're running out of white yarn, feel free to knot some more on, but do it once you get close to the end of your embroidery yarn. Um, if I run out in the short time while I'm working on this little X, I will show you what I mean. All right, my embroidery yarn is running out. Here's the little tail I started with. I want to leave that there and I want to tie in a little more yarn. So I'm going to flip my barn over so that I'm looking at the back of it and I'm just going to tie in some new embroidery yarn. And I want to create the knot there we go, so that it's as close to the bottom of my, the back of my uh, barn as possible so that the knot doesn't want to come through. So I'm going to just pull that so that it's nice and tight. I'm going to trim these little ends because I don't need all that. There we go. So I've tied in a new yarn and it won't interrupt the embroidery across the front of my barn door. So I'll thread that tail back up, flip it back over. I'm still working on the diagonal. So I'm still looking for spaces that will create a nice straight diagonal line from one corner to the other. My knot doesn't want to come through because I made it tight enough and close enough to where it sort of at the back of the, the fabric and I can just keep going. So there's me continuing my line and here's my little tail, my little knots sort of stuck at the back there. So that saves me from having knots on the front of my barn and it also allows me to tie in some new yarn as I go. There's the finished embroidery of my big barn side door. I'm going to flip it over. As you can see, it's a complete mess back here, but who cares? <laughs> no one's going to see the back of it. I'm just going to take out my yarn needle, grab my short tail that I started with, the remainder of the tail that I have here. And I'm just going to tie the two together a couple times because I don't want my knot to come undone. Don't pull too tightly. Again, you don't want to accidentally risk pulling your stitches or any of your fabric out of alignment. I'm going to do that three times just so I know it's nice and tight. 
trim any ends. This will all get hidden up behind it. And that's barn door number one. I'm going to make a thinner version over here on the front. So just like I did here, but just a slightly thinner version. And then I'm going to create a little tiny square up top in the attic area. I'm going to use exactly the same technique of just embroidering straight lines. Once I figure out how, to, how big I want it built or how many stitches wide I want it, I'm going to make it pretty much the same height as that door. So it'll just be the same height, but a little bit shorter. And then I'm just going to make a little square up here. Remember, it doesn't matter what it looks like on the back because that's not going to show. All right, I went ahead and added a little window up here, another one over here because I felt that area needed something, and there's my main front door. And just to give you some context, this is what it looks like with the roof back on. And of course there's going to be our little side piece over here, which will look much better once we've stitched it down nice and flat. But that is what we've got so far for our little barn. Here's an optional thing. If you want, you can grab some gold yarn and just put some hay spilling out of the top of our little attic or our hayloft area up here. So I'm going to go ahead, grab my gold yarn, it's just a short length of it, thread up my yarn needle, and this is all I'm going to do. So I'm going to use the same technique. I'm going to bring the yarn from the back to the front. I'm going to leave a tail back behind so that I have something to knot my tails together with when I'm done. And then I'm just going to embroider some medium length stitches that are just all kind of pouring out of the same little place. So I'm going to go back and forth through the same, sort of the same space in the, the window and then to different little points outside of the window. So it just looks like there's some hay spilling out of the hay loft through that little window up top. And I'll do a few short ones. Remember, don't pull too tightly. And then I'm going to pick another spot inside the window and I'm going to do some out the other side as well. So just a little bit of hay spilling out of the hayloft. You can do this if you want. It's entirely up to you. Um, I like <laughs> I like the idea that the hay is up top in the barn and there's a little bit spilling out the top. Just a little bit of hay in the hayloft. These are all the pieces we need for our barn applique. So our barn is done, we have the embroidery in, we have our little optional bit of hay if we want it, and our two roof pieces. So now we need yarn, red yarn to sew down our barn and our yarn needle to sew down all of our pieces. We need our blanket too and we can sew our barn into place on our 2019 folk art blanket. We're ready to sew our barn applique onto our blanket. So this is where we're going to position it. I've got my blanket folded so that I'm looking at the transition piece between the dark green and the light green. I'm on the far left side of my blanket. So there's the left edge. My blanket's folded. And here's where it starts to step down. I want to position the barn. So I'm just going to grab the red main barn piece for now. I want to position it so that it's just a little bit in from the edge of the blanket and it's sitting just down a bit over top of that transition between the dark green and the light green. You can pin it into place here if you want, but you can also just hold it, decide sort of how far down you want it to sit. I think I'm going to go down to the bottom of the second row of green and we're going to sew our barn down starting at the bottom edge and working our way across that flat bottom edge. That will allow you to keep your barn nice and straight if you follow the top edge of a row of stitches that's already on your blanket. So you're going to thread up a nice long tail of your barn color and you're just going to attach it with a little knot at the bottom corner. Now you can hide this little tail in later, you can weave it in before you start, it's entirely up to you. Just make sure it's tied on there nice and tight. Reposition your barn in the, plot, the spot that you want. I'm going to have mine running right here. And then we're going to use that same technique that we used with all the other pieces and continue to use where you pick up a loop of a stitch on the blanket and then the corresponding edge stitch 
of the actual applique. Because I'm going to follow this line along the blanket, it's very easy for me to see the next little loop to pick up, and I don't really have to worry about pinning it into place. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to position your barn, sew it into place, pause every so often to make sure it's not shifting around on you, especially if you're not pinning it down. Remember to use the top facing loops of your blanket stitches, the whole piece of the side edge of your applique, work your way all the way around your barn and back to the beginning. Once you've sewn all the way around your barn spot, you want to just make a simple little knot at the side make sure it's nice and tight and then you can weave that tail in through the stitches of the barn so you want to just basically camouflage them back and forth a few times until you're, you're certain that it's not going to come out. Make sure you don't forget about that little short tail that you also used at the very beginning. And then we're going to put on the roof. Next, we're going to sew on that little small piece of side roof that we made. You want to line it up so that the top part of the little bit of the roof just barely overhangs the top edge of your barn. So if you were to lay it flat, the little top edge would just curl down over the top of it and touch your blanket. Then you're going to make sure that it's just overlapping the edge of the barn and you can either pin it down or hold it in place and sew it down to the blanket and the top of the barn all the way around the outside edge. Once you've finished sewing all the way around the edge of the little roof spot, then you want to just make a little small knot, weave the tail in, just like you've done with the other pieces. And the last piece we get to sew on is the main roof. Same thing, you can pin it down in place if you need to, or just hold it. You want the bottom edge to overlap the top part of the barn, the side edge to over top, overlap a bit of the edge of the barn top, and the it should be in alignment with the top of your little short barn piece up here, the roof. So your roof pieces should match up and you can follow a line along one of the rows on your blanket. That will help make it easier to sew it down into place and also to keep that barn edge nice and straight because you're going to be using the same stitches in a row on the blanket to sew it down. You can pick a row along the top of your barn piece, so your barn is nice and straight as well. You can pick a row along there, use all of the same stitches, the top facing loops of them, in a row as you sew down the end of your barn roof, so the bottom part, and that'll make your barn roof nice and straight. Straight across the top and straight across the bottom. So thread up that long tail you left behind with your yarn needle and get stitching. Once you've sewn all the way around that roof edge, make a little knot, weave that tail back and forth across the stitches on the top of that roof, and you're all done your barn. Now, Mr. and Stitches suggested that it, for anyone who wants to add a little more definition between the front and the side of the barn, once you have your roof on, you can take a little bit more of your roof color and you could embroider a quick running stitch, just like we did with the sides of the doors, of our barn doors, from the corner of your roof, so somewhere around here, in a straight line down to the bottom edge of your barn. And that will help give a little bit more definition to the front and the side of your barn. That's if you want to do it. I'm not going to do that. I think I like the way it kind of looks just with the roof on. But if you were interested in a little bit more detail, that was a great suggestion from Mr. and Stitches. And it wouldn't be too difficult to do. You can just run the stitches between sort of the back of your applique and the top of the blanket. Just feel your way through. You can do that pretty easily by just running your needle uh, between some of the stitches and you know that they won't show through to the back and if you're wondering just quickly flip your blanket over and make sure you're not sewing through the whole thing and that's an easy way to add a little extra definition to your barn and there you go 
a barn. That's a big applique, and it's one of the first of a whole bunch of really neat things we're going to continue to add to our folk art blanket throughout the year. I hope you enjoyed making this barn along with us this month, this week, <laughs> and we'll see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye, everybody! Hi, everybody! Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe!